Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. All right, predicting league champions 10 years in advance is ridiculous. Go back to 2010. Who'd have thought the next decade would bring about league titles from Montpellier, KAA Ghent, PAOK Salonica, Feyenoord, Atletico Madrid, Leicester City. So just remember that before you instantly sentence me to death in the comment section below. All right, I'll, I'm gonna look at the 15 biggest leagues in Europe and predict who their champion will be during the 29-30 season. I'll probably have succumbed to gangrene by then, but hopefully you lot will be able to see if this happens or not. English Championship Portsmouth. Yeah, it's a bit stupid including England football second tier as one of the top leagues in Europe. But lads, look at the money spent. Look at the attendances. I have to chuck them in here. By 2030, nice to, let's say the winner securing promotion to the Premier League. Why not Portsmouth? It's a club stumbling out of a decade-long recuperation. Let's give them another 10 years of championship consolidation but we're finally back among the big boys. And just don't start chucking around cash like confetti. That's what drove your club down a pumpy mineshaft in the first place. Austrian Bundesliga, Austria Vien. I hope so. Come on, Austria Vien. Pep talk time. Pull yourself together, please. Because you're just watching Red Bull Salzburg take a giant dump over your legacy. You've won this thing 24 times. You can do it. You're supposed to be an Austrian giant. So what are you doing lying comatose halfway down the league? Watching Salzburg lift seven league titles in a row. I'm hoping by 2030 this supposed big club will have restored themselves to the top of the tree. Scottish Premiership, Celtic. Listen, I'd love to tip an outside club like Aberdeen or Hibs. But let's be honest, the last manager to win a Scottish Premiership title with a club outside of Glasgow was Sir Alex Ferguson in 1985. It's, it's not going to happen. I had hope for Hearts when they stormed at the top of the league in 2005, winning their first eight league games, and then the implosion with George Burley sacked within a month. By 2030, Celtic will be champions, obviously. Belgian First Division A, Anderlecht. Anderlecht are Belgium's most successful club. By a long way, 34 league titles, nobody is even close. Sure, they're having a rough few years, but come on. They've not gone more than five years without a league title since 1980. It's inevitable. Ukrainian Premier League, Shakhtar Donetsk. Listen, Shakhtar Donetsk are hell-bent on becoming Ukrainian football's most successful ever club. At the turn of the century, just two decades ago, Dynamo Kiev outnumbered them with 22 league titles to Shakhtar's zero. Zero! Donetsk didn't win their first one until 2002. Since then, they've splashed the cash, mostly on Brazilians, won 12 and clearly have Kiev's record hole in their sights. They've won the title three years running. They show absolutely zero sign of slowing down. Yeah, by 2030, champions still. Greece Olympiakos. I mean, who else Christ above? Olympiakos have finished top of the pile in Greece 44 times in their history. 44! I know they've gotten sloppy and slipped up in recent years, with AEK Athens and PAOK Salonika stealing into left silverware, but come on. Normal service will soon resume. Christ above, they haven't won the league since 2017, and this is still their biggest title drought since 1996. Literally mental. Turkish Super League, Istanbul, Basak Seher. For the past 10 years, the Turkish League has been shared around the city of Istanbul via three different clubs. I'm gonna go for a fourth Istanbulian club, squashed in the Turkey's capital city, Istanbul, Basak Seher. Listen, I know they were only formed in 1990. Some of their players are older than that, and they only reached the top flight in 2008. This club is a virtual baby, and yet it's flooded with big names. Gail Clichy, Demba Ba, Rabinho, Christ above, when that guy was signing for the biggest club on the planet, this club was stuffed halfway down Turkey's third tier. Anyway, they're a club with no history but big ambition. They're currently tied with Trump's Bonspor at the top of the league. I think we're looking at Turkish football's next footballing giant. Russia, Spartak Moscow. Listen lads, this is an actually competitive league. For the last 10 years, the Russian Premier League has been shared around four different clubs, three of them from the same city. Zenit St. Petersburg have a pretty strong pedigree. They're the current top dogs, no stranger to chucking cash around. But I'm gonna go with Spartak Moscow. This is a club with 22 league titles under their belt. Sure, they faltered in recent years, for Christ's sake. They're currently 22 points off top spot. Russian fans are probably tuning into this now to laugh with the sweaty Irishman without a single brain cell in his head. But I face that, all right? Come on, Spartak. Prove me wrong! Portugal Sporting. Now this is insane. <laughs> the Portuguese league has literally been shared exclusively between Porto and Benfica since uh, 2002. For Christ's sake, the Spanish league has been more unpredictable than that. Had Hearts not suffered a mid-season meltdown in 2006, then the bastard Scottish football would be more competitive than this league. But uh, 10 years is a long time in football. And Sporting, not... Not Sporting Lisbon, I know how much the Portuguese hate that. Although, uh, does it not help to differentiate from Sporting Braga? For Christ's sake, Portuguese fans get so insulted whenever someone says Sporting Lisbon, you'd swear you were calling Kendall Jenner's dad Bruce. It's... it's just your name. <laughs> Whatever. Sporting... 
from the capital. Sure, they're not even a thought in the title race these days, but considering their history, considering their location, considering the players they've had walk through their club, I'm predicting a big money takeover will happen to restore them to the top of the pile. I mean, don't forget, this is a club with 18 league titles. None since 2002, sure, but, but that just means they're due one. I'm predicting them to win a title in the next 10 years might sound insane, but I think a club of this size, going nearly 30 years without a title, that's even more ludicrous. I mean, who are they? Liverpool? Dutch Eredivisie, AZ Alkmaar. Yeah, that is, 2030 is going to be a weird year. Right now, the Dutch League is the plaything for Ajax and PSV to wrestle over every goddamn year. Christ, when Feyenoord won it in 2017, the world nearly stopped. It was such a shock to see a nearly 40-year-old Dirk Kout lifting that bastard thing. But lads, alright, beware the return of AZ Alkmaar. A club who've won it twice in their history. All right, lads, here's my logic, right? Check the Eredivisie table. Had this season been allowed to finish, they might have won it this season. They possess one of Europe's best youth academies. Look at the likes of their 22-year-old captain, Team Coop Miners, the 19-year-old goal machine, Myron Bodu, 21-year-old Calvin Stings, the left-back, Owen Wignal. This is a squad littered with their own youth prospects. 67% of their first team are academy products, and they currently have 56 points by March. I hope this concentration on developing youth does pay off, rather than just blowing the budget at overpriced European stars, it's a refreshing way to run a football club, so go on Alkmaar, get yourself a third league title. Christ, if they do win this by 2030, I'm going to look like an absolute genius. League on Marseille. I mean, one can only hope. Listen, I have nothing against PSG, but they have ruined French football. I know comparing this division to a farmer's league is probably enough to have Alfie from Sevens hacked down my door with a pickaxe, but come on. PSG have bought these titles, at least in the Premier League. Sure, Man City have pressed the cheat code, but there's still other rich clubs to drive the competition. For Christ's sake, Man United just spent 80 million quid on a human fridge. Premier League clubs aren't exactly having to busk in the street for their lunch money. But France though, who's actually gonna top up PSG's reign of terror? Who can compete with 200 million pound superstars? It's a joke of a league. In 2010, Marseille lifted their 10th league title with PSG stuck on just two. It's only a decade later, and PSG have eight, just two behind Marseille. I mean, this is a club that actually accumulated the trophies over a rich and proud history. PSG have bought them. I have to hope by 2030 things will have changed. Inject a bit of life back into this league. I predict by then the Qataris will have grown bored and pulled out. Something my dad should have done in the mid 90s. Leaving Marseille, a respectable club with a rich history. Leaving them to go back to being top dogs in the country with Didier Drogba's son stuffed up front. Germany, RB Leipzig. Yeah. Things are heading this way, aren't they? Yes, I know, having listened to this, the Bayern Munich fans are probably coughing blood out their nose, but lads, would you not welcome a bit of healthy competition? You've literally won 29 Bundesliga titles and seven in a goddamn row. Even you must be bored. I'm hoping that by 2030, the Leipzig project will have this club regularly competing at the top of the league. 10 years ago, this club was stuck in German football's fifth tier and they were called FC Liefering. But now they're in the Champions League quarterfinals with a center back who causes most of you soggy sheets. So yeah, come on. Get yourself a league title. Syria, AC Milan. Look, the easiest answer is that Juventus will be hovering up their 45th Syria title in 2030. Well, no, I want a bit of competition back in the Italian Serie A. Christ them up, Juventus are on course for their ninth, ninth league title in a row. This is supposed to be one of the world's top five leagues. It has the same outcome every bastard year. Listen, don't get it wrong. Forget the fact that AC Milan have spent the last decade in turmoil, signing the likes of Fabio Barini. AC Milan are a massive club. 18 league titles, seven Champions Leagues. The fact those fans have been forced to watch Blackburn and Sunderland rejects, staying their club's hallowed badge for the last, ah, oh, it's disgusting. I hope by 2030 that is enough time for Milan to get their act together and climb back to the top of that tree. Because I refuse to accept that this is just AC Milan from now on. A fallen European giant scrapping out a mid-table with Hellas Verona and Parma? Forced to lick their wounds and never stop talking about their past glories? Who are they now, the Italian Huddersfield? No, they'll, they'll get back to where they rightfully should be. La Liga, Real Madrid. Yeah, pretty dull answer here. Listen, I love to predict the return to the days of when Valencia Deportivo La Coruña used to win this thing. Back in the early 2000s, but, but no. In this era of elite clubs, chucking around insane amounts of cash each and every year, this title is just going to be continuously passed back and forth between Barcelona and Real Madrid until a meteor hits the planet Earth. So it's either going to be born at Bar uh, let's say Madrid, who by then will have Rainier, Jesus, Jadon Sancho and Troy Parrott. Christ, the lad from Belvedere scoring in El Clasico's Premier League Newcastle. Yeah, you all think I'm mental, don't you? You all think I'm crazy. You all think I should be wrapped in a straitjacket and never let out of the house. Look, lads, like it or not, Newcastle United are getting bought by Regamich Saudis. That didn't sound right. They're going to be back competing for Premier League titles. Even Demba Bash said it. By 2030, listen, 
10 years is long enough for a financial makeover to start reaping the rewards. A decade after Man City's launch in 2008, they were lifting their third Premier League title with 100 bastard points. For Newcastle, I'm predicting a similar story. Anyway, that's the end of it, guys. What do you think? Have I got this all horrendously, horribly wrong? To be honest, I think most of this is just in hope. Hope that these leagues can stop being so goddamn predictable. Come on, break up these winning streaks. Restore some fallen giants to glory. Come on, just... Just add a bit of spontaneity back into European football, please. Because looking around the leagues now, you almost know the outcome before half of them even start. Anyway, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.